Welcome back everyone. Just finishing up on a Saturday. I thought I would bring you into the loop on this Epiphone Elitist 335. All the frets are cut, notched, beveled, and polished. Ready to install. The edge dress will be a breeze right at the end when all the frets are installed. So let's get started. Look at the diameter of that rod. Look at the ID of that nut. This is the Epiphone guitar. And this is the diameter of the Gibson truss rod and the ID of the nut on that. Now I took that off and polished it up for Gary. Put a couple of drops on there. And then put that back into place. going to snug that down. Well I need to take a second and explain why we went to all this trouble to refret this guitar. That neck to body junction did need to be leveled and we did that. We respected the original radius but when I took the truss rod cover off and went to adjust the nut well it was completely loose and the neck was actually going in a back bow. So now with the truss rod nut loosened right off. I mean it's removed completely. So there's zero truss rod load on this neck. Now watch what happens. Now I can slip that feeler gauge 3 thou under there and slide it right along. So we have all the relief we'll ever need. This is with zero string load. So what that means for the customer is this neck will always be able to be set up for 8 to 38 or the 12 to 50 strings that Andrew prefers or any string in between the truss rod is now completely a hundred percent adjustable that is why we went to the trouble of doing what we did so now that we have the lay of the neck fully adjustable before I do my final leveling and I don't think this needs much if anything I'm slipping that feeler gauge under there and I'm loading the truss rod until I can no longer fit that feeler gauge. Still got a bit of relief there. A little bit more load. Let's try that again. Okay, so that's our 3 thou. I'm going to drop it down to 2 thou. So this is 1.5 thou. And and it no longer slips under that straight edge. And what that tells us is that this neck is as laser straight as you could possibly get it. Now, and only now, we'll pick up the file and very lightly do a little reconnaissance to see if it needs anything at all as far as leveling goes. Okay, here we go. So now with a feather light touch, I'm just running that obliquely over the crown. And as you can see, this is as straight as any fingerboard could possibly be. In other words, it doesn't need to be leveled with the file. We're going to go straight to the scrub block and then we'll do our final buff and then we can get on with the nut and final adjustments. That 
is our 600 and 1200. Now we're ready to buff. Wipe this on, wipe it off, clean up that compound, and then we're on to the rest of the job. And this is how we cover our tracks. When this guitar is done, you get a hundred people to look at it, no one would ever know that anything has ever been done, let alone a complete refret and fingerboard correction. And this neck, for the first time since it was made, is 100% adjustable. All right, let's continue. Just getting rid of that slock and the machining, we're gonna get rid of this too. I have to admit, boy, the uh, Japanese tolerances are unbelievably close, much closer than any Gibson I've come across. The finish, the chrome, all of the detailing is nothing short of amazing. Anyone who follows my channel knows that I work on a lot of vintage Gibson stuff. And this is Japanese precision at its very best. I notice that even around the female insert, they've chamfered it a little bit so the finish doesn't crack. <laughs> yeah, they took this job very, very seriously. So we'll check this for fit. I've got a little slip of uh, Teflon tape on there. And that seems to have done the trick. Oh yeah, that's there's no no jiggling there. Okay, so we'll do the same with the other post. Well, we put a lot less Teflon tape than I normally put on. And again, this is a testament to the Japanese machining. Okay, so no more slop. Everything's nice and solid. Let's get the bridge. Well, yeah, there's definitely at least uh, 12 thou of play there. Okay, that's much better. Well, well, well. We have a problem, Houston. This is the proverbial sinking Les Paul bridge. You see how the center is kind of sagged? I've seen this happen actually numerous times. I think the 12 to 52 string tuned to concert pitch probably just kind of pushed it along a little further. I talked to the customer. I have a replacement bridge that happens to be a roller bridge and you've seen me use this before uh, previously on that black Les Paul of Sheldon's for the next surgery and the nice thing about this bridge is it's very cost effective. It's got the perfect radius to match the fingerboard and the perfect string spacing to match the Gibson pickups. So we're going to go ahead and use that. We'll just tuck this one away for the originality police at some point in time if they ever show up. In the meantime, his guitar is going to be 100%. So this is our replacement bridge. It's 100% perfectly in tune. And have a look at that string spacing for the pickups and the edge of the neck. We've got a perfect radius to match the curvature of the fingerboard. So these are the D'Addario Chromes 12 to 52. They're the strings that we intonated this guitar to. Let's do the proverbial tuning test. I am going to stick that uh, foam in there to mute those other strings so we hear clearly and see clearly the fundamental note. Here goes, six string. <laughs> fret and first fret so we'll chase that across I moved that mute over so now it's just the A string seventh fret octave 12 fret open and first fret okay now the D string 7th fret, octave, 12th fret, open, 
and the first fret. There we go, third string, seventh fret, octave. Second string, seventh fret, octave. Open and first fret. And the first string, seventh fret, octave, twelfth fret, open and first fret. Now we'll go play some chords and you can really hear this thing. So this is it. Uh, Andrew's uh, ES335 Elitist Epiphone model, which is spectacular guitar. It's done. There's our compensated nut. That is the replacement roller bridge. Everything has been set up. Of course, complete refret. We corrected that fingerboard at the top end. We loaded the truss rod now so the neck is 100% adjustable for any string anytime into the distant future. He uses these 12 to 52 string, which is, you know, probably fairly heavy by most standards. It's a flat wound chrome. And uh, I don't use these strings myself, but I've been kind of monkeying around on this thing. And so I put together this Latin thing, Latin minor funk thing in D minor. <laughs> I've looped that, so I'm going to let that play and I'll kind of blow over top. Here we go.
Thank you.